is Shay and I like to make things and this is going to be a video talking about these shoes that I made last summer. And so I made a little video series on them on TikTok. You can see like the whole thing on this link in the description and all that. But a lot of people online thought they're super cool and wanted some more details on it. So this video is going to be more tutorial and less like cool TikTok transitions. But yeah, so this is just like a chill vibes talk through how I made it. I always find it's really helpful when you find inspiration from stuff. And this idea actually came from Irregular Choice. Irregular Choice Shoes is a brand of shoes that I love, love, love so much. And I could never afford them. And I've always wanted a pair of Irregular Choice shoes. I especially love their Disney collaborations. Like this is their Alice in Wonderland and their Cinderella one. You can kind of see the inspiration a little bit. So basically they're like 200 to 300 $300 a shoe, which is completely a fair price. These are like works of art. I would pay that if I had that, <laughs> but I don't have that, so I decided to make my own. I heavily drew inspiration from their shoes. This kind of turned into like my version of if they made a bell shoe. I think they did end up making a bell shoe. I don't want to go too in depth in design and bore you with the details, but the front's really based on like obviously like the red of her dress and like the rose imagery. Um, this the rose in the glass panel does like the the rose in the glass case from the movie. Um, the side panels are actually the stained glass from the intro and I just liked a lot of the gold filigree because it felt very royal and I really associate Beauty and the Beast with like gold tones especially from like that ballroom scene of like the tale as old as time. And the back which actually did not make it into the final design because it was too hard and at the end I was getting very tired. It was like a book spine that said like Beauty and the Beast kind of like tying back to the fact that like these were fairy tales. Yeah, I just I just sketched it up and then I colored it and then that's kind of what I started with. With projects like this, I really like to start with a base and I usually get my bases from Goodwill. So I found a pair of like Steve Madden heels for like 10 bucks at Goodwill and then I just gave them a really solid clean, used some laundry detergent, washed them down, hung them out to dry. And then once they were all dry, I had a perfectly good pair of shoes that I could get started on. The first thing that I chose to make was the rose, and so I actually sculpted it out of foam clay. And I just got this from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below, along with links to all the other supplies I'm using. But I sculpted right onto the shoe. I would just roll a little ball of foam clay in my hand, and then press it into a pedal, and then just attach it onto the shoe. So just like pedal after pedal after pedal until you get a shape you're happy with. To be honest, I've never actually made anything like this. I'm not a sculptor, but um, just took a little bit of trial and error. I think the final shape ended up being my third rose try so it does take a couple tries so you're actually gonna make two of these little roses and that's the fun part about shoes you're gonna make two of everything it takes twice as long but it's twice as fun so you're gonna let your foam clay dry for at least 24 hours and then you're gonna seal it with Maj Podge. I just gave it a little coat. That's gonna help protect it as well as prep the foam clay for painting. And then it's on to painting time. So painting actually took the longest amount of time. I think it took about two weeks and you'll see why. For this project, I'm using a set of Angus leather paints. I just got it on Amazon for like 25 bucks. I'll link all these supplies in the description, by the way. So you don't have to worry about scouting around for them. The reason I'm using Angus leather paints is because they're really flexible. They're water resistant. It's just a really solid paint that's not going to chip, it's not going to bend. Um, I recommend it for painting any type of shoes. So to start it off, I gave the whole shoe two base coats white to cover the red and to give it like a nice solid base for the colors. You'll notice it's actually a little bit pink because the red bled into the white, but it still works. Once that's all dry, then you can start on the main part of the shoe, which is the stained glass panels. These stained glass panels are actually screenshots from the first intersection of the film. I really like the imagery from the beginning of the movie and I wanted it on this shoe, so I actually just took my four favorite frames and like the four frames that I felt best represented the story and I printed them. I didn't want to freehand this because I wanted to do, I didn't want to freehand this because I wanted to do, I wanted to do, wanted it. I didn't want to freehand this because I wanted it to exactly match the screenshots. So what I did is I actually colored on the back of it with pencil and then traced it so that like a little bit of the pencil like transferred 
kind of like those carbon papers that you used to use that no one ever uses anymore. And then to make that pencil line a little bolder so it'd be easier for me to see, I went over it in fine point Sharpie. Looking back, this is a terrible idea because Sharpie bleeds through paint. So if you do this, don't use fine point Sharpie, use like a ballpoint pen or something because what ended up happening is it bled through all my paint. It didn't really matter in the end because I ended up doing an additional trace over at the end, but all in all, it was just a lot better if you used a ballpoint pen. But yeah, I traced a lot, <laughs> like a lot, a lot, a lot. This took about two hours per panel and I had four panels. So it was just a long time and this was only the outline. We were just getting started. Now the outline's complete, I covered all that hard work in a layer of white. I'm not sure if this was necessary, but I think it helped just soften the lines a little bit. And then it was time to actually add the colors in. This whole part was done with that same leather paint set. It was used for the whole shoe. And this wasn't too bad. It was just kind of like a paint by numbers, lots of mixing colors, lots of just like chill painting. It was fun, really relaxing. It did take a while though. This was another like one to two hours per panel. Again, four panels. Okay, so once everything's all pretty and painted, you're gonna have to go and outline it. The reason I outlined it was just to make it look more like stained glass. So I basically used both thin and thick Sharpies and I added some extra lines in to make it look more like stained glassy. I ran through like a whole pack of Sharpies making these shoes. But yeah, you just kind of chill and trace. Again, takes a long time, but like this whole process is pretty relaxing. You just put on some music and you just go for it. So with that, the side panels are finally done. The tedious part is over. Now we gotta go to the fun part, which is like the rose in the back. So first things first, give your rose a little paint job. I use the same paints. Just get the rose painted however you like it to be. I decided I wanted a sparkly black backdrop for my rose. So I used a mix of both paper as well as just like painting black and like gluing glitter on top for like the more complex curves. And then I added a little leaf. It was like a piece of gold filigree and I shaped it and painted it and screwed it in. Now we get to go to the most exciting part, which is the glass case. This is a Pet G plastic from Amazon. Again, linked in the description. How I did is I found something that was like the right size cylinder. It happened to be a paddle and my dad kayaks. So I, he just, I took his kayaking paddle. So I actually just used a heat gun to shape that over the paddle to get this really nice curve that was like the perfect fit for my shoe. Then I used some tin snips to cut out that piece of plastic so it shaped to the heel right. I actually used shoe glue to attach it and I don't know if this is like the best glue to use for it. This is the first pair of shoes I've made, but it worked pretty well for me and it was also really nice that it was clear. The bottom is actually just a piece of black warbler that I cut out and then shaped to the glass form and again, just attached it with a little shoe glue. The big thing to note is that there's actually a little hole for the heel to come through. So when you walk in these, it's actually like you're walking in the same stilettos. It's not like walking in wedges. This glass case does not support any weight. But the reason I did this is because, again, I'm not a professional shoemaker, so I want the full weight of the shoe and my body to be on the parts of the shoe that were made by the shoe manufacturer, not the additional pieces that I'm adding on. So this is about three weeks into making this and I was getting kind of tired. So if you notice the design getting a little sloppier, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to wrap it up at this point. For the front little part of the shoe, I decided to section it off with a piece of leather cord just to kind of distinctly separate those two sections. And then once that border was added, I gave it a base coat of paint and then I added the glitter on top of that. And this is the fun part where you just kind of start adding random like designs and filigrees on and gluing them on the shoe. So to cover up that kind of messy glue line, I found some gold trim from Joann's. I also kind of spiced up the sides of the shoe with some gold filigree. And this is where I got lazy and I didn't end up doing the back of the design. And instead I just put some more gold filigree on it and called it a day. On the front of the shoe, again, I added just a little piece of gold filigree, and then I added some rose beads from Joann's, and that was all just glued on with E6000. So you can see kind of like this ending part is just like me getting to glue on stuff to make some funky fun shoes. The last thing I added was just like a little strap. This is just made with some elastic jewelry string and some beads from Joann's. And that's it, that's the final shoe. Here's like a little like pretty montage. Actually, they're not perfect but I love them a lot <laughs> and 
a lot, a lot, a lot of work went into them. And I don't know, they make me smile. Okay, when I can afford it, I still really want my own pair of like legit irregular choice shoes. They're beautiful, just look at them. But for now, I am super happy to have my own DIY pair. And they're my favorite princess too. Belle is obviously my fave. I mean, I spent like a month making shoes for her, so you can tell. But that's pretty much it for this video. I know it's been a while since I made a video. Um, I've been really having a lot more fun on Instagram and TikTok, but recently I've been kind of like wanting to do some more longer form tutorial-ish style stuff, and so I think I might be inching my way back to YouTube. Who knows? I actually really want to make some tutorials on the past projects that I've completed because I just have like so much video footage of them that I never got around to editing because I'm lazy. But we're in quarantine now and time is endless, so <laughs> it's time to finally edit everything. If you have any suggestions for past projects you want to see tutorials of, let me know in the comments below. Right now the two that I'm like thinking about is maybe making a tutorial for my self-opening wings or a tutorial for my Anastasia ball gown. With all that said, I will see you next time. Have a great day and um, happy quarantining, guys. Stay safe.